Swayam Prabha. Digital India. Educated India. Welcome my dear learners. This is a video for the subject of education for the course of Bachelors in Education and for the paper of Educational Technology Part 2. This video lecture is based on communication and interaction and in this lecture the focus will be on the concept and process of education. This video lecture is recorded by Dr. Iram Khan. The course coordinator and the presenter of this video is Dr. Iram Khan from Jamia Millia Islamia, New Delhi. The academic expert and the reviewer of this video is Professor Jaseem Ahmed from Jamia Millia Islamia, New Delhi. This video is produced under the project DTH Swayam Prabha channels of Ministry of Education, Government of India. Hello my dear learners, I am Dr. Iram Khan, Assistant Professor at Institute of Advanced Studies in Education, Faculty of Education, Jamia Millia Islamia, New Delhi. Today, we will be discussing a topic related to communication and interaction and the lecture will be based on the concept and process of communication. Let us start the lecture first with seeing what are the objectives of the session. The objectives of this session are to discuss the concept of communication, to elaborate the process of communication, to explain the components or elements pertaining to the process of communication. First of all, we have to see that what exactly we mean by communication. Communication means transferring thoughts, information, emotions, and ideas through different forms like gestures, voice, symbols, signs, and expressions from one person to another. There are three things which are very important or you can say that the most important and essential in any communication process. What are those? These are sender, receiver, and the medium or we often say medium as the channel. So communication plays an effective and essential role for running any of the processes or in case of a school or in case of a college or educational institution uh, which is either formal or informal where the teaching learning process is happening communication is the most important thing. In many ways teaching in, uh, in case of uh, communication can be seen that mo most of the times in teaching communication is the most important thing and when we are talking about a good teacher we are taking it uh, actually by default that this teacher would be having good communication skills so it is also equally true for the learners here the learners should also have some sort of efficiency in their communication because while the process of learning, the learners who are participating in this uh, process of teaching and learning, they have to be uh, communicative, they have to uh, be reciprocal, then only the process of teaching and learning can go very uh, properly. So good learners are always good receivers and they are also good responders. So in this way, communication can be seen as a vehicle or a tool for running the show of teaching, learning, and uh, this is always treated, uh, communication is always treated as a two-way process in which both the source, and here by the source what we are considering, the, we are considering the teacher and the beneficiary who is here the learner. Basically, both are being interacting, like they are interacting with each other. And this proper realization of this communication in turn uh, is in a position to fulfill the objectives of teaching learning. So this process basically uh, here there are a lot of interactions happening the, between the teacher and the student and during this interaction whatever teaching learning process is happening we can say that the effectiveness of the communication basically we can consider it as an art and also the technique of good communication can be considered to an effective science where things are happening in a fluid way 
transactions are happening transaction of knowledge from from one uh, source to the beneficiary is happening and reciprocal exchange of uh, thoughts is happening so in this lecture we will be discussing uh, all those uh, important points related to communication and also we will be seeing that what are the components of communication if we talk about the concept of communication basically communication in its literal sense stands for the act of communicating one can communicate his or her ideas or thoughts or feelings or any type of emotion or the transfer of uh, the thought or any any sort of feeling or any sort of information and knowledge to others through the act of communication and for this purpose this particular person uh, either a male or a female or anybody may also take the help of some instruments or appliances or in few of the cases devices like we are using nowadays mobile phones or um, we are uh, doing video conferencing where the internet is the medium or uh, we do communicate by the uh, by different letters or fax or email even radio broadcasting and uh, telecasting are the ways through which information from one source is communicated to another receiver so in this sense communication may be taken as a one sided transaction of a piece of information knowledge ideas thoughts and feelings from a person here this person or the initial uh, point is also the source of transmission to another person or the different people who are at the receiving end so however its meaning cannot be limited to such a one way transmission and we all are aware of this that communication is having a much broader aspect or much broader meaning it is always a two sided affair the source of transmission and its receiver equally share and participate in the communication process if it is not happening then we can't say that the proper communication is happening so the etymological derivation of the term communication also supports the uh, whatever we just have discussed all the all those thoughts so as uh, it is commonly known the term has been derived from the latin word communis which means common so in this sense as a word the term stands for an act of sharing commonness or common understanding and experiences with others we can also quote uh, the statement of edgar dale he gave in 1961 that uh, he talked about various uh, aids various uh, teaching learning material he is also considered as the newton of audio visual aid and instrumental technology he has defined the term in his own words and under quotes communication is defined as the sharing of ideas and feeling in a mood of mutuality so here you can see that mutuality is a word which is very much emphasized so according to edgar dale whenever communication happens communication is happening so there should be mutual exchange of thoughts or ideas or feelings so this very important uh, definition of uh, communication given by edgar dale is some uh, something which can be remembered so that we can get an idea that what exactly communication is all about so when we go ahead and see that what exactly is the innate meaning of communication we can see that consequently the communication is also to be taken as a process of sharing like whenever we talk about communication there is somehow this innate meaning which comes up so what we know or have in ourselves in the shape of ideas thoughts or various feelings emotions when we share 
all these things with others through the process of communication we actually do a, we, we are actually making this sharing happen so when this sharing is happening we can say that the process of communication is also happening it is done through the help of some or the other media or um, any means of transmission and preferably in the way which is being received or uh, you can say that properly received by the receiving person or the person who is at the receiving end so the person or various people on the receiving end try to receive and respond to uh, whatever is said or whatever is uh, transacted uh, and and this particular response is necessary this necessary response uh, which is the uh, which is the gist of this interaction with the source of transmission is something which is very much desired so if we are talking and talking and talking and uh, to whom we are talking the person is not able to comprehend what what exactly we are saying then there is no any meaning of communication so it is very important that if one information is transferred to another person or group of people the information should be clearly and properly transacted so in this way a chain process or cycle involving the cooperation of the source and its receivers comes into operation for the effective realization of the fruits of communication and on the basis of what uh, we have just discussed we can have a workable definition of the term communication and let us try to see what exactly we can make out in the form of a proper definition uh, it can be that communication is a process of sharing or exchanging experiences information ideas opinions sentiments thoughts feelings emotions and many more between the source of communication and the receiver through some mutually agreeable or known media which can be either verbal or non verbal so this is somehow uh, you can say a proper definition uh, carved by us here for communication in due course of the lectures on communication we will be discussing that what exactly is the meaning of verbal and non verbal communication how uh, we go for uh, doing such type of communications let us now focus on the process of communication so as we have just discussed that communication as a two way process involves the interaction between two or more people or many people like one person can interact with many people or one person can interact with one person so it can be somehow involving uh, a, a source and the receiver so here we can see that there is a cyclic process which is happening and we can see here in the diagram in the cyclic diagram that how the process of communication goes on in the diagram we we can actually see that there are six main components or elements and in general these six components go hand in hand in the process of communication what are these let us just have a look so the first one is the source of communication or the sender of the message from where the process initiates then we have the contents of communication or the message the next is the media or channel of communication then the receiver of the communication and also the response material or feedback what exactly is coming back or what is the response then the facilitators or barriers of communication so all these six main components which we can consider as the elements are very important and they all go hand in hand for the process of communication we can see that this flow can be seen here in the diagram and we will discuss one by one that what exactly they all mean so 
the first one which is the source of communication we can often say that this source of communication can be somebody a human being or a machine or anyone who is the communicator so the process of communication essentially starts with a source of communication so there must be somebody to initiate the process this source whether in the form of some objective or any event or even a person must be in a position to transmit the information or a piece of knowledge or any of the ideas thoughts opinions feelings or many other type of things which are known or possessed by this uh, this entity this human being with the other person or persons on the receiving end of the communication so idea or thought is initiated by a person or any uh, source and it is transacted it is transmitted to another person or people or persons who are at the receiving end so this is the major point of the process of communication it is generally named as sender in the language of communication technology and in the teaching learning process going on inside the classroom the teacher is regarded as the sender of the message whereas in any other communication or communication situation any source of knowledge it can be anybody it can be even a machine can be regarded as the source of communication so this is the first initial initial step or you can say the component of communication which is the source and in major uh, points if if we can consider the teacher as the source it will be not bad but in nowadays uh, in the present scenario even uh, there are many uh, ways of uh, communicating where even the uh, some somehow the student can also initiate the process but most of the times the teacher is considered to be the source of communication in a classroom the next component is the content of communication or the message what exactly is intended to be communicated or transmitted by the source here the source is the sender from his or her own capacity knowledge the information or thought opinion feeling or any type of uh, expression which this source or the sender is willing to do to the other person or the persons who are the rece receivers or who are at the receiving end is known as the contents of communication try to understand it once again whatever information whatever is the gist or whatever is the main point which is being transacted the information the piece of information or a thought or an opinion or a, or the feeling which is being transferred is basically the content of communication and these may be well organized and structured or unorganized and unstructured there can be spontaneous communications happening which depend on the nature and purpose of communication and the media chosen or situation prevalent at the time of communication let's take an example when we are talking with um, our friends or anybody uh, from our family at times there are many are information uh, sharing which happens between us which is very spontaneous we have never ever thought of uh, that we will be going and communicating in such a way but what happens from one piece of information other pieces of information come into being and the process of communic communic communication goes on and which is very much unstructured or we can say very much spontaneous which depends on the situation in which we are the peep the person from where the communication is starting and who is receiving the communication so this is the second uh, 
component which is content of communication or the message is again a very important factor or the component. The next component is the media and the channel of communication which is again very important. What a person is wishing or what we are willing to convey to others is always communicated with the help of appropriate media or a channel. The media is basically, uh, we, can, we can consider it uh, of two forms, two distinct forms, which can be verbal or uh, basically uh, by spoken or written words. And the other form is nonverbal. And what exactly nonverbal means? The communication which is through different type of gestures, sign language, by body language, or even the Morse code. So there can be many ways when we are not actually speaking up or writing, but we are communicating, which is considered to be the nonverbal form of uh, media, media of communication. So in a communication process, both the sender and the receiver are forced to make use of the media or channel of communication that is mutually acceptable as well as it is very much effective. Without the media, it is not possible to communicate. So this is the third component of communication. So at the onset of any communication process, when one as a source of the message uh, tries to convey some information or different ideas through through the uh, through different ways or maybe the, the thought process or feelings the person is in fact motivated to transmit the, that particular piece of information or any any sort of feeling to the receiver and for this uh, this person first tries to organize the communication material in proper shape and then this person will search for an appropriate media which can be either verbal or non-verbal. So here the individual has to make use of a special transfer mechanism which is known as encoding. What exactly is the meaning of encoding? Transfer of thoughts and feelings into widely accepted, agreeable and understandable verbal or non-verbal signs and symbols. For example, when a person tries to convey, uh, suppose I'm, I'm not feeling happy about something. Basically, I wish to say that I don't like this thing. What I will do? Maybe I will use some language because I'm in a position to speak up. So I will be speaking up and I'll say that I don't like this particular dish or this particular food item. So don't give this food to me again or I will say that I basically don't like the taste so please don't serve this food to me again so here what I what exactly is the media which I am using to show my displeasure basically I am using the media which is verbal in nature but there can be various gestures or body movements but which can be involved. So if I'm having some food item and my facial gesture is not very pleasant. So this, the person who is sitting in front of me or maybe serving the food can, can actually internalize or can make out that maybe I'm not liking the food. Although I'm not speaking up, but because of my gesture, because of my body language or my facial gesture, the person will be in a position to get the communication that how uh, how I am liking this food item which is served to me. So this is somehow one of the examples where we can see that uh, communication is happening. Verbally also we can communicate and even non-verbally by gestures or by facial features we can actually communicate our uh, thoughts or expressions or our emotions. When we move ahead for the actual physical transmission of this uh, <clears throat> symbolic expression, a person may use a variety of channels. 
So these channels of transmission are in fact nothing but the media or means which call for the use of our sense organs. And these sense organs we all know, sight, hearing, touching, tasting and smelling. So all these five uh, sense organs can be involved to communicate according to the demands of the situation and the effectiveness of communication. One individual may plan for the use of the appropriate verbal or non-verbal symbolism and sensory channels. So this is somehow a little bit more about how we encode, how we communicate when we are pleased or we are displeased or we are actually willing to say something or willing to uh, that somebody who is uh, at the receiving end should be in a, in a position to understand what we are willing. So this was this encoding, which is somehow the important point of the process of communication. The intended encoded message, which is traveling through the sensory channel, then can move to the receiver. Since it is encoded in a symbolic language, the receiver has to resort to its decoding for understanding its meaning in the way as intended by the communicator. You can, you can try to understand this in a way that if I'm having the food and my face is, uh, facial gesture is not very pleasant, I have shown this displeasure by a specific type of facial gesture, which is a way of encoding the symbolic language to show my displeasure. Now, the person who is sitting at the receiving end has to decode that when this type of facial gesture or facial expression is shown by a person, whether this person is pleased or displeased. So this is basically the decoding of the communication, which is symbolic in nature. The receiver, after receiving the message, tries to respond. Here, the, the person who is at the receiving end now takes initiative for opening the channel of communication with the source for transmitting his or her response or providing feedback. Uh, this person also takes the help of encoding uh, his or her response in the non-verbal or verbal symbols. So this encoding response is then traveled through the sensory channels and reaches the source which further decodes it for getting the needed feedback for maintaining the desired flow of communication between him or her and the receiver might often feel that this is a typical or uh, this is a language of uh, um, a lot a lot of technology but uh, you can just understand it in simple words that when we are when we are uh, showing our expressions the person who is at the receiving end is if the person is in a position to decode to sense that what exactly this expression is meaning the person will be responding or will doing the action so that the uh, that that desired response is gained so if the person uh, somebody is uh, trying to feed me up and i'm showing my displeasure out of the taste of the food there might be some feedback which i'm giving in the form of non verbal verbal communication so the person who is trying to feed me up will remove that food and will replace it by something which, uh, which might be uh, good for my palate. So this type of process will happen and uh, the proper feeding of a person can happen. And here, this, this type of uh, example can apply on any of the processes where by communicating, we, we show our pleasure or displeasure and we actually complete an act where information transfer was required. Now let us come to the next component, which is the receiver of the communication. The receiver is the person or a group of persons who remains at the receiving end of the communication. This person is basically 
receiving the encoded intended message of the source of communication. This person decodes it for its proper interpretation and react or produce a desired response, which can also be considered to be giving a feedback to, to whom? To the source from where the information is initiated. So in this way, the receiver, like a far end pole, is equally important for the flow of the current of communication between this receiver and the communicator or, or the sender of this message, this process is actually happening. So it is very important that both the ends should be remaining. We cannot talk in air or we cannot talk if somebody is not sitting in front of us. There, there, there can be uh, no interaction if there is only a sender. So for the process of interaction or the communication, the sender and receiver both are important. The communication can remain operative only if the receiver is interested and, and basically this human or this person is possessed with the required competency to decode, to understand and effectively respond to the communicated message. Let us try to understand it in this way. Suppose uh, I'm speaking in Hindi and the person who is sitting in front of me, I am willing to communicate this person. This person is from some other country and he or she is not in a position to understand my language. What will be the fate of this communication? Basically, whatever I am saying, whatever I am encoding, the person who is at the receiving end is not able to decode that communication. So this communication is going to fail because the source and the receiver both are not in a position to encode and decode the communication in a proper way. So it is very important that both should be on the same page. They, they are in a position to understand the uh, the the message the language or if it is a sign language or it, if it is something which is symbolic then also both should be in a position to understand what is being transacted and what is being received so the person at the receiving end is considered to be the receiver which is the another component of communication the next is the response or the response material, maybe it can be considered to be the feedback. So the response material or the feedback can be defined as the reaction or response signals in the encoded form transmitted back by the receiver on the part of the receiver to the communicated message after its proper decoding or maybe interpretation and understanding this uh, response giving or feedback giving process can happen and in order to maintain the flow of communication this response giving or uh, providing feedback is necessary so the effectiveness in the flow or uh, flow basically uh, in the process of communication is dependent very much upon the quality and effectiveness of the content it is through feedback that one person may evaluate the outcomes of his or her own communication, what was intended to be communicated. We, we often try to amend our own language if we are trying to say something to somebody and the receiver is not in a position to understand, we try to, to change the way in which we are speaking. What exactly is that? We are getting some feedback that the person is not able to understand. So we try to, uh, to make sure that the receiver should understand what we are saying. So we change the way in which we are communicating. So if um, it has or has not reached the receiver, the information has not reached the receiver, then there can be, it can be considered that there is a gap in the process of communication and this gap should be 
uh, somehow a difficulty or misgiving in the interpretation of the message. So we have to remove this gap. This communication gap should be removed. Then only this uh, this entire process can be considered as successful. So the quality of communication as a two-way process, it may be properly maintained through a proper feedback from the receiver and its subsequent follow-up on the part of the sender. So this is the next component, which is the response or material or the feedback of uh, communication. The next one is, or you can say that the last one is the facilitators or the barriers of communication. The quality and effectiveness of the process of communication is affected favorably or adversely through the presence of some other intervening variables lying between the source of communication and the receiver. These variables, according to their nature, helping or obstructing the path or communication can be considered to be either the facilitators or the barriers of communication. So if they are helping the process of communication, they can be considered as the facilitators. If they are making hurdles or they are uh, disrupting the process, then they can be considered as the barriers of communication. The presence of congenial, physical, psychological, and environmental conditions and facilities available for effective communication may facilitate and help in providing the desirable effectiveness to the communication system. The types of barriers to be discussed in the uh, in another session, like we will be discussing it in detail because it is very important to know that what can be the probable barriers of communication and also what can be the uh, facilitators. So we will be discussing in detail all those hurdles, all those barriers, what can be done, what should not be done. And uh, we will be in a position, I, I hope that you all will be in a position to understand that what should not be done if we are trying to make a proper communication happening in any of the scenarios. So that is something which, which, which will be discussed in detail in separate lectures. Let us try to summarize what we have studied today. We have studied the uh, what exactly is the process of communication we have studied that the communication is a process of sharing or exchanging information, ideas, thoughts, and feelings between the source of communication. And in the process of uh, teaching learning or in a classroom situation, we can consider a teacher as the uh, source of communication and the student as the receiver. So the process of exchange of information, ideas, thoughts, or feelings between the source of communication and the receiver through some mutually agreeable or known media is considered to be the process of communication. And here, this media can be either verbal or non-verbal. Then we have seen the six elements or components which are involved in a properly maintained two-way communication process. We are also trying to see that the source, the content, or the message the media or channel, the receiver, the response material or feedback, and the facilitators or barriers of communications. Communication, which is basically the uh, considered to be the elements of uh, or the components of uh, communication, how important all of these are to run a proper communication between people or between groups or in any a given situation. So this is uh, somehow the introductory part which uh, gives you uh, an idea that what exactly we mean by communication. There are many other sessions in which we will be discussing more about uh, principles, about types, about barriers and many more uh, aspects of communication. These are few of those references and the suggested further readings which were uh, discussed while uh, preparation of this session. Uh, you can also go ahead and read more 
and learn more about the process of communication in a better way by reading through these uh, given material. Thank you so much from my side. Let us see each other in another session another time. Goodbye. Dear learners, you were watching a video on the communication and interaction and in this lecture we discuss the concept and process of communication. This video lecture was recorded by faculty at home during the homebound situation of COVID-19 pandemic using minimal technical resources. Technical errors, if any, are unintentional and may please be ignored. For any queries with regard to this lecture or broadcast, kindly send your email to techsupport at dth.ac.in. Thank you so much.